Hi all. I'd like to do a video on how to start a band, a music band. Uh, I'm no expert on the topic, but I thought I'd give you my advice. Uh, back in the late 80s, 90s, I had a small music store where I taught music and that's all I did there was teach and uh, tried to write songs put together a small recording studio probably had about fifty thousand dollars worth of equipment uh, uh, most of it I bought used I didn't buy it buy it new but still it was a pretty nice setup it was before everything went digital so it was all on analog tape you know but I had a lot of machines, MIDI stuff, and digital synthesizers, and uh, sound effects, and the whole bit. You know. So I gave it a good shot at trying to start a band at least three times. And that was back before the internet. You know, The internet had come out, I think, uh, somewhere around mid-90s. You know, that's when they had Windows. 95 but uh, it wasn't until the very end I closed the store in 97 when computers the personal computer really started to get into the home you know? so we didn't have the web we couldn't just hop on the web and search for topics you know so lots of the stuff that I learned on how to start a band it was a uh, spotty information you know I took a lot of advice from people that didn't really know what they were talking about but I didn't know that I was young I was new at the business you know there wasn't a lot of articles on it in the guitar magazines and things like that so uh, I never really got it off the ground you know uh, came close a few times, but uh, it just never happened. So that's why I thought I'd put together this video so you don't make the same mistakes that I made. Yeah. Uh, I watched through just a couple of the videos online about this stuff. When I first did a search for it, I didn't think there would be any. It's like, who would ever think of doing a video on how to start a band you know but I see there's a lot of them and a lot of them are kind of silly you know they're fun to watch a uh, few of them had some pretty good advice but uh, it's still spotty you know so this is from my point of view uh, I had the music store for eight years yeah, uh, I, I taught college for 20 years or more part-time. So I got a few years under my belt. You know. But still, you know, this is my advice. Take it with, take it with a grain of salt. And uh, I hope it helped you. Okay, so the short answer is you need about 50 songs. That's what most people say, okay, just to get started. Uh, three sets of 25 songs. You know, you, you start playing at the club at 10 o'clock, and then you quit about 2 o'clock or a little later. So most people say 50 songs to get started. Uh, set three you can play the same set as set one because the people there because most of the people the ones that were there at 10 probably won't be there when you start set three later on in the evening okay but you should work up the three sets of 25 uh, I put together this sheet here it's just a word file song list and like this would be our main goal what do you want the record companies to see? 
you know, that should determine your song list. Okay? So, just out of curiosity here, something I've never done is 25 songs times 3 minutes. So 25 songs, let's say we'll stretch it out just a little bit, we'll say 5 minutes, that'll give you a break between each song, you can talk to the, you can talk to the audience, you know, give the drummer a time to wipe himself off, you know, when you talk to your audience that's actually the best part because that's where they get to see your personality. Uh, you'll see the pros do it all the time, you know. Uh, so it's 125 minutes times three sets is 375 minutes divided by an hour. So that's six hours. So you only need four hours. So you can see three sets of 25, that's quite a bit. Yeah. We stretched it out to five minutes but the reason why I did that is because if the audience is getting into a song you know you can draw it out a little bit you know repeat the chorus a couple of times you know if they're all dancing and having a, a good time don't stop just keep playing the chorus over and over. So that's the standard thing. Uh, I also had one fella tell me, uh, and he'd been playing in the bars forever. I actually watched him do it one time on the phone, and that's why he told me about it. Uh, he had gotten a call to play a wedding, and he was supposed to play, like, I don't know, I don't remember the exact times, but like, uh, let's say 10 to 2, you know, 10 p.m., 2 a.m. That was in the contract. While he had the person on the phone, you know, he was chummy chummy. And he said, hey, we start at 10, but it's okay if we start a little bit after, right? And the guy on the phone said, yeah. And then he said, oh, we're supposed to play till 2, but we'll probably quit a little early so people got a chance to get out early. And the, the guy that called him agreed to it. And then after he hung up the phone, he laughed about it and said, hey, I just cheated him out of 30 minutes. You know, but that's how he would cut his song list down. You know, if you're supposed to start at 10, you may not start till a little bit after 10. You know. But uh, each club is different. They might want you to start right at 10. You know. But those are things that you learn as you've been doing it for a while. So. Okay, so to get back to my list here. So main thing is what's your goal you know why are you starting a band you know we all learn to play an instrument you know we want to be musicians but do you really want to be a performer you know big difference between being a musician and a performer like me in my younger days I never even thought about being a performer I just wanted to play you know and uh, I've always been a teacher, you know, ever since I was like 18 or 19, every job I had, they stuck me with training the employees, because they found out I had some college, so all of a sudden I became the trainer, you know, so that's how I ended up teaching music, and uh, so what's your goal, you know, most of us would say, I want to make it in the music business. You know, that's your goal. That's a good goal. Don't be ashamed of that. You know? uh, or, you know, you might want to just make a living playing local. There's nothing wrong with that either. You can make a good living just playing your local clubs. And there's nothing wrong with that either. But the difference is, if you want to make it in the music business, business you're gonna to have to learn to write music write your own songs develop your own act 
You know, you can't be a copy. No record company wants to hire a copy. You know? So that would be the difference there. Uh, there's lots of examples that I could come up with there. I taught music during the grunge phase and uh, I actually had guys come in dressed and had their hair cut just like Kurt. You know, Right-handed guys wanted to learn to play left hand because Kurt played left hand. You know, they were just so caught up in it they wanted to copycat them. Which there's nothing wrong with that. It was cool stuff. But would a record company buy it? Probably not. So, so the goals are kind of the same because you're starting a band and you just want to get it going. But there might be differences with song choice. You know, if you want the record company to see certain things that might affect your song choice. For an extreme example, if you want to be a heavy metal band, you may not want to play Motown songs or vice versa. You know? Uh, you want to be a country band, you may not want to play heavy metal songs. You know. Plus, you know, if you want to make it in the music business, you have to learn how to write songs. You know, how to improve your song writing skills. And I've started doing videos on that too. So. And there again, I'm no expert, that, but I've studied it. So. Okay, so we're presuming that you want to make it in the music business. You, know, you want to start a band. You know, what type of music? We all like something different. Everybody's into something different. Um, what they say is just be yourself. You know, if you aren't into country music, you know, don't try to start a country music band. You know. Because by the time you get things going, five years down the road, country music might not be popular no more and they might be into something else. So in general, they say, just do your own thing and hope for the best. You know. uh, what type of music though do you want to play locally to get started? You know, if you learn a bunch of country songs, you probably can't play in a rap club, a dance hall, you know, and vice versa. If you learn a bunch of rap songs, you probably can't play in a country bar. Now, of course, there might be some overlap, but but uh, where are you going to play? You know, can you name at least five places in your area? Like, I'm in a small town, and I don't even think we have two places to play now. There there might only be one. So, so you have to drive like 50 miles to the nearest big town to find some place decent to play. So, so how far are you going to drive? Something else in a small town is uh, it may be hard to find four or five people that play, that are willing to do the type of music you want to do. Just because it's a small town, you don't have a lot of choice. If you go to a bigger town, there's more people, you have more people to choose from when you start your band in a bigger town. Okay, so pick your songs. You need about 50 songs, maybe more. I talked to one fella, he had 300 songs, but he was like 70 years old, been doing it for a long time, and it was one of them old time bands, uh, played music from like the 30s and 40s, the old uh, ragtime, and I don't even know what you call it, but uh, he had like a small symphony, and they played it right off sheet music, so they didn't have to memorize all those songs. Plus, they'd all been playing them for a hundred years, so they knew the songs. So, so 
So we've already talked about this. What do you want the record companies to see? Uh, in general, songs that you write, they call them originals. Those don't work when you first start playing out. You know, most clubs don't want to hear it. You know, they just want to hear you do other songs that have been sung by big artists. You know, covers, they call them covers. You know. But as you build your reputation, start to filter the original songs in, like play a couple at the end of the night, see if people like them. Uh, you're going to have to find other band members. Usually, in general, they say don't start a business with your friends. Now, of course, you got a bunch of guys, you're all friends, you want to start a band. Uh, but in general, that may not work when it comes to business. Uh, if your buddies are serious, it might work, right? But uh, lots of guys aren't, especially if you're young. As we get older, you know, people that you went to high school with, we all grow in different ways. You know. uh, some people that you went to high school with, some of them will be executives, some of them will be burglars and rapists and murderers. You know, we all grow in different areas. So just because you get along now, as you get older, you may not get along. So. But I'm talking to one person that you want to start a band and you want to be serious about it. So you want to have contracts with your band members. Uh, you may not want them real strict, but you don't want to spend six months practicing with a fella and then have him jump ship for something else. Now, of course, if he doesn't want to be there, then you probably don't want him there either. So having the contract is kind of a tough topic, but you just don't want people to just get tired of it and they get a better job and they just quit coming. So having the contract, it just kind of, it weeds out the losers, you know? So you only find the serious people, the people with your same goals. Something you'll bump into now is the guy's girlfriend's mad because he's going and practicing with the band all, all the time. Well, she's got to understand this is a business. He has to practice with the band. So if they drink or do drugs, a standard thing there is when you start playing the clubs, it'll only get worse. There's more drugs, there's more alcohol. Okay, so that's a very important topic. Yeah. Now, there's nothing wrong with partying, right? But if they're just an alcoholic or a drug addict, you don't want them around. They'll be stealing your band's equipment and selling it for drugs. Yeah. Guys are just nuts these days. Uh, no matter how good they play, if they don't have their own equipment, forget them. You know, you got to have your own guitar, you got to have your own amp, you have to have your own rack. You know. If they're a serious musician about making it in the music business, they'll have their own equipment. Uh, it's preferred that they have some college because then you know they're not an idiot. You know. uh, no high school dropouts. You know. If you can't make it through high school, how are you going to make it through life? You know, it's just this doesn't make any sense at all. I know I, there's always like the one exception, but for every high school dropout that makes it in the music business, there's probably millions that don't. So you want to have your best chances. You, know? you want educated people. They may not have graduated from college, but you want somebody with some brains. You know, you want you don't want a doofus. Now, 
we're talking here, you know, how to give your band the best chance. Yeah. This college thing, that's kind of a tough topic because lots of times musicians do drop out. So, so that's just something that you're going to have to make a decision on. Basically, you want good people. You don't want to pick the local losers and say, hey, he'll be a good drummer or he'll be a good bass player. You know. Okay. Okay, so you'll need equipment. You know, you have your guitar, you have your bass, you have your amp, you have your drums or your keyboard and your amp. But then the band needs a PA. Now, I've heard of some clubs that have their own PA. You can pay them. You know, uh, there's one club here in town. They pay you 500 to play the night. If you use their PA, they charge you 125. So, it's best to have your own PA because that's your sound. You're controlling your sound so the record company can hear your sound. If they have a crappy PA, that's not going to help you at all. <laughs> Got to have good mics. Now, usually SM58s. Let's see here. Sure. SM. And sure. Those are the two standards for playing live. So you should have a lot of those. You know, as many as possible. One for each person in the band, one for each drum, and one for each cymbal. You know. You'll need backup equipment in case something fails. Especially power amps. You know, if a power amp blows up, there's no sound coming out your speaker. So starting a band is a business. Most of the money you make goes back into the band to buy equipment. Uh, it's very common to make $25 a night. Uh, you're not going to get rich playing in a band. Last I knew, the average club plays roughly $500 a night. Divide that by five people, you each get a hundred plus gas to get there. So minus ten. So you're down to ninety. Save ten percent for taxes. So you're down to 80 if you stop and eat afterwards minus 20 or more if you got a girlfriend so you're down to 60 so you can see why most people don't bother starting a band yeah. uh, last I knew the highest paid places to play were weddings but if you don't play wedding music, how are you going to play there? And they paid, last I knew it was like 1200 or 1500 So that's why they say, you know, you're, you're not really making a lot of money. And that should go back into buying equipment. So what's that mean? You're going to need a day job. So. Okay, so... Okay, so you start a band, you need a place to practice, 